Hello, hello, the Farm Geek here. Cast iron cookware. You just can't beat it. So first, I'm going to cook up some of my forest raised apple finished pork sausages. And I'll give you guys a primer about my cast iron cookware. Okay, so let's first talk about why would you ever want to use cast iron versus one of those standard pots or pans or skillets you get from the uh, store. Well, my first reason is Teflon. I'm not a big fan of it. I think it scrapes off. I've read quite a bit, whether or not it's proven or not. I'm just not willing to take the risk, so I'm using cast iron. And the added benefit of cast iron is that it has iron in it. So as you're cooking with it, you get a little bit of iron in your diet. So that's a good thing. And I guess the other reason is, is that this stuff is pretty much bulletproof. It lasts forever, 100 years plus. I'm sure the one I have right now is probably 50 years. And it's almost like an heirloom you can hand down to your kids if they want it, right? So that's another reason. Another reason is, is that I don't know what it is, but maybe it's not proven again, but it just, stuff seems to taste better. Like bacon and eggs in a cast iron skillet. Man, I don't know how they just cook up. Fantastic. I don't know what else to say. It's just amazing. And then also cast iron kind of makes it kind of fun to cook. I don't know, you don't just throw it in there. It's kind of gives a little more of a pizzazz per se. It's kind of kind of nice, right? So I love cast iron for that reason as well. It's just kind of, I enjoy cooking it and you know making meals in it. And then I guess one of the last reasons is, is hey, it's a good for self-defense. You know, you've seen a lot of people you can bonk someone over the head. But no, I, I don't know. I just love cast iron. If you do any reading on it, I think you'll find lots of reasons why it's great. All right, so laid out on my stove here is my collection of cast iron. I call it my collection because over the last eight to 10 years, we've collected this stuff from garage sales, Kijiji, Craigslist, uh, I guess a few pieces online off eBay. Uh, but generally it's taken us, you know, we try and get it about fairly inexpensive if we can. You can find a lot of stuff and you can just, uh, you know, get it working for yourself. But what I've got here is I've got some skillets. I got about five, five different sized skillets here. I've got some griddles. I've got some specialty items, I call them, and then I've got my all different sizes of Dutch ovens, which we use extensively. So we've used all these pieces. I've actually seasoned in every one. So what I'll do now is I'll get behind the camera and I'll just show you a little more detail what these pieces are and give a little explanation. Okay, so here's our skillets, our five main skillets. Now your skillets are your backbone of your cast iron you know, cookware collection or even cooking in general. Like your main one we use the most is definitely your 10 to 12 inch one. That's the one I recommend that anyone who's gonna start a collection or start using cast iron get. Uh, it's, it's basically the size of a frying pan that's used the most. As well as we use our eight inch one. We use these two for breakfast, for bacon and eggs, for cooking up onions, for all kinds of stuff. As well as the small one I use for kind of, you know, again, the onions. These bigger ones over here are not as common and, uh, you know, most people wouldn't get these ones. We have the large one there we use for, you know, doing uh, frying up potatoes or frying up meat, as well as this one here for larger meals with more people. These two here don't necessarily fit as well on your, I guess, standard stove. They fit well on, you know, this cook stove, but on your standard stove. So really these three down here are the ones I guess start with. And if you, if you figure you need a bigger one and you find one that's a good price or you know, good quality, uh, definitely snap it up. You, you can't go wrong with it at all. Um, if what to look for when you're buying this, these cast iron, pretty much any piece of cast iron you want to look for, anything that, you know, no breaks or cracks or miss, things missing. Obviously that's not a good thing. As well as you want to look for, make sure it's actually in good shape as far as how it sits. So we call wobble. So when you take it on, the, on a surface and it, you know, make sure it sits nice and flush. You'll notice this one over here has a, a bit of wobble to it. And that's just, as you get bigger, it's harder not to get a big a bit of wobble. So you really can't avoid that. Don't get too paranoid over that. But you know, the small ones, these you know, 12 inches and below should be fairly flat and should be very good quality. The other thing you want to look for is a nice sheen flat surface. Because obviously um, any kind of irregularity, stuff will stick to it. No matter how much grease and salt and preparation you do, stuff will stick. The flatter the better. Um, you know, as far as brand names goes, um, the new ones, uh, Lodge makes a whole bunch of ones. They're good quality, they, although they do have a rough surface on them. Uh, and you can grind that surface off and make a nice sheen. I have a video I'll post down in my notes that shows that. But, you know, they're, they're fine. Um, but I prefer to go online or go to Grass Hill and find some antique or vintage ones. Uh, the best brand names, obviously, are Griswold or Wagner. Those are the high-end ones. But there's other brands as well that make really good cast iron, especially up here in Canada. We've had no problems with, so. Next, we'll go over our griddles and our special items. Over here on the left, we have our two different sized griddles. And we like our griddles for cooking pancakes, for cooking pizza, uh, even bacon. They're not used as much 
as the skillets. And I, you know, I don't necessarily recommend even getting them. We got them because we found them and they were a good price and I liked them for my collection. But overall, we don't use them as much. We use this one here a lot for pizza, which I'll show actually a pizza we cooked today in it. And we use them for pancakes. So I made this one size here. I found this other one and I got it just because it was a great deal. And again, I'm kind of collecting them, but I wouldn't. They're not as useful per se as the skillets. Now over here we have uh, kind of a grill type one, and again you can find those, but I don't use this as much. It's good for cooking up your burgers, and maybe some sausages and a lot of kind of stuff, but really, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's harder to clean, and uh, we don't use it as much. And then down here is just a special little one we got from, I found a little specially, um, it's a little Griswold. It's basically a, a breakfast, call it a breakfast uh, little cast iron cookware thing where you put your bacon and your eggs in here. and. Okay, fresh out of our kitchen queen oven is this beautiful pizza pie using one of our griddles. And the last of my collection is this, uh, my Dutch ovens. Now I have four different size Dutch ovens. You definitely do not need four different size Dutch ovens. I'd say the medium size one is probably good by itself. But again, I found some good deals and I'm a bit of a collector so I got some Dutch ovens. Dutch ovens are, we don't use them as much as we use the skillets and other things. We use them maybe for ch cooking chickens or roasts or potentially making some stews, but not as much. But mainly for cooking our roasts, turkeys, chickens, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we use the small, about the small one there, mainly for cooking sourdough bread. So that was we use that one for. The big one there is a little too big for sourdough bread, but that one's just perfect. So again, we're looking for with um, these Dutch ovens, you want again things that aren't cracked, uh, you want fairly smooth surfaces and all that kind of stuff. I actually have four different types of, of Dutch ovens here. I have one that the small one's made by Lodge. I have one up here that's actually made by McClary's, which is a Canadian company. I have a Wagner one, and I have a basically an unknown one. This is basically, I call it the big cowboy, cowboy Dutch oven. It's uh, huge, maybe for cooking a turkey in or some big stew outside or whatever, and uh, go from there. Now, Dutch ovens um, typically can have legs on them or no legs. In my case, because I'm not actually cooking out in a pit, I'm actually cooking on my oven or in my oven, I don't want the ones with legs. So these here, we actually took some of the, uh, I guess you'd say the, the, the ring tops off, just because they're easier to deal with in the oven. And, but you, again, you can, either way works, but uh, for indoor cooking, you probably want the one without the legs. As the other thing you want too, is you want a good lid that fits well, and probably like the standard drip top, or you know, again, the nice finish inside, not a lot of rust and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it's pretty obvious. Um, and again, you can source these from the various different places online or antique short stores and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, we love this stuff. And uh, again, we, again, the, the taste and the evenness of cooking is amazing. So let's say you're convinced you want to use cast iron cookware. You run out to an antique store or wherever you want to get it from. You find one, you bring it home. Now I recommend the first thing you do is actually strip it down, bare the iron, and then re-season it yourself. Now. I say this, even if the guy you bought it from says, yeah, no, it's been stripped and cleaned and all that kind of stuff, I'd still do it myself because you don't know what kind of oil I use and all that kind of stuff. Not just me, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but again, you can kind of see here on this one, this one's not totally seasoned. Uh, it has a bit of a grayness to it. This one here has a nice sheen seasoning to it you want. So to strip it down right down to the iron, there's three different methods of using uh, to actually get down the iron. One method is to use like a grinding wheel with a wire brush and some sandpaper. And I've used that in a few of my pieces if it's not that bad. Uh, the second method is to actually take the piece itself and throw it right in the firebox. And uh, the actual heat of the fire will actually take off everything off it and basically right down to the bare iron. Works good, actually does work, I've used it. The risk of course is you can warp it because the heat's too high and actually maybe end up um, weakening the iron and actually breaking it if it cools down too quick. Uh, I'll post a video about a guy doing that. The third way, which is the way I recommend, again, this is your choice, is to use electrolysis. Now, not the same type of electrolysis that removes your hair, but actually removes the finish off it. And basically it's washing soda and a manual car battery charger and some water and an old piece of iron. And away you go, and it works really well. I've done it on a lot of these pieces, and it's really easy to do and it works really well. At the end, you might have to just do a little bit of finishing with the sandpaper, but it's amazing. And I'll, instead of me showing you how it's done, I'll post a video of a guy doing it. It's not rocket science. Again, just use manual charger. Don't use an automatic one. I'll use your rack racket. And it works really well. It's right down to the bare iron and it gets it all nice and gray. And then once you've got it gray, now you've got to season it. Okay? And seasoning is pretty easy. It's just a time-consuming process. 
All you're going to do is take your piece and take some oil. Now, the best oil I'll probably use is flaxseed oil. And a really light coating. Don't put too heavy. You just, you know, wipe it on and wipe it off. Just really light. Take it upside down and put it in your oven at around 350 to 400 degrees for about an hour. And it'll smoke. So be prepared to open doors and windows. And then you'll let it basically season it on. And then it'll progress. And you do, about, do that same process about four or five times to get a nice coat of black seasoning on it. And uh, again, there's some links I'll show online how that's done. It's for our YouTube videos. I'm sure you can find multiple sources. But the bottom line is you want to get a nice coating of seasoning. And what that seasoning does is it helps make it a little more non-stick. Helps protect the iron from any kind of rust. And it makes it non-stick. Okay, so I'll post some links and some videos about how that's done and the way to do that. But you know, don't get carried away. Like I, you know, of course, I'm an engineer, so I got carried away the first time I did it. And I did like five, six coats, and it was perfect. But realize that as you use it, it's going to strip off old coats and all that kind of stuff. But really, once you've got that first kind of four or five coats on it and it's cleaned, just use it. Right? Just use uh, liberal amounts of uh, oil, cooking oil, or bacon grease, or whatever you use, uh, coconut oil, for when you're cooking something. And if you use liberal amounts and just ongoing, it'll end up getting a good seasoning later as it goes. Um, some of the cooking will actually strip the seasoning off, some will leave it back on, but just don't get too concerned about it unless it looks really bad. But even that, you know, again, it's not the end of the world. So, but just have fun with it. And like I said, don't get too carried away. Now I want to go over a couple of the um, tools or things to get in addition to getting the actual basic cookware pieces, which are very important. Uh, actually, probably the most important thing I have as far as cast iron cookware goes is my stainless steel spatula. Now these are very important, stainless steel. We got this from Lee Valley Tools. I'll put a link below. Nice and flat on the top and fairly sturdy. We actually have about four of these things because we use them extensively, like I said before. Make sure it's nice and flat, make sure it's sturdy. And this is what you're going to use to cook with as well as scrape it and clean the cast iron. Now again, the scraping and the cleaning is probably the biggest pain. And with something like this that is very good quality, uh, makes your job a lot easier and makes using cast iron cookware so much better. Now nice and thin because when you're cooking bacon and eggs you can slip it underneath as well as sturdy enough that you can actually get some good scraping action going when you're actually cleaning it up. So when you're actually cleaning you know, up your cast iron, uh, make sure it's a little hot still, not too cold, and you can actually scrape off a lot of the, uh, you know, when you're cooking pork chops, something like that, a lot of that will stick on there, and this will take it right off, make it nice and clean, leave the seasoning on, won't strip all the seasoning off. Amazing tool. The second tool you're going to use a lot of, unfortunately, is paper towel. And we use a lot of paper towel. Prior to having, prior to having cast iron, we didn't use a lot of this. Now we use quite a bit, so not the greatest, most environmentally friendly thing in the world. We end up burning a lot of it in our cook stove, but you know we do use a lot of paper towel. That's the one downside. In addition to those two things, we also have little, not burning your hands, so little cozies for the actual piece of the, the holding, the holder, I guess you could say. And these things are neat, but and we use them a lot at the beginning, but we don't use them as much anymore. All I do now is I just use a simple, you know, basically a you know, paw holder, right? This, that's, that's all we use and it works, they work great. Uh, we also use these trivets or triviettes or whatever you want to call them. And these are good for when you're cooking something to kind of take it off, leave it on the stove but take it off the heat. Especially when you're cooking tea or something else but just to kind of take it off the heat and keep it warm or keep it warmer. And again I got, you know, I have two of these that came with the Dutch ovens and we use them as, as well for that. But these are really good as well. And the last thing we have is uh, I found this at an antique store which is basically a, a grease container. In my case it says grease on it. But we use, uh, we keep our bacon grease in here and again you, when you're cooking with cast iron you want to make sure you have a lot of grease on hand. You know, good organic uh, you know, bacon, bacon grease, and away you go. So, but those things, especially the spatula, makes your life with cast iron cookware a lot easier. Well, there you have it. Cast iron cookware in a nutshell. Like I said before, you just can't beat it, uh, especially with our homegrown meats and our kitchen queen wood cook stove. Uh, we love it a lot. Um, if you want to get more information on this stuff, of course, I recommend going to uh, Paul Wheaton's website, richsoil.com. One of the first articles on cast iron that kind of got me into it way a while back. Really good source of information there. And there's tons more information on the internet regarding cast iron. You know, like I said, just have fun with it. Find a piece, play with it, use it. Hey, enjoy it.